Okay, hi everyone. So we're on to quadratics now. Really important part of the AS level. Um, sorry, it's not AS, A1 now. Uh, well, really important to all of your math studies actually because quadratics kind of set up every bit of algebra practice and uh, solving things and you know they link to much harder problems as well. This is so fundamental to your learning uh, and your maths journey here. So that's why we've made such a big emphasis on it um, and you want to hit the ground running and this is something in GCSE that isn't always uh, kind of emphasized as being as important as it, as it should be. So we're first going to deal with this idea of the discriminant and what does the discriminant mean? Well as you can see in the booklet your discriminant is this formula b squared minus 4ac. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's a few things really, okay? So if you've got a normal quadratic in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, what does that really mean? It just means every quadratic will have a number next to x squared, a number next to, a b, uh, to an x, and a constant by itself, okay? Um, <clears throat> and you need to get it in this order. So that way you can recognize which numbers are A and B and C, okay? Uh, now, what is this B squared minus 4AC telling you and how does it relate to this? Well, what you're trying to do is uh, it's telling you how many times this graph crosses the x-axis essentially, okay? So at the moment, y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, you can't use the discriminant on that because it doesn't equal zero yet. So we are interested normally is when in when a quadratic equals zero. So we should know what a quadratic looks like. It's that kind of general U shape like this. Yes, yeah? so that's a positive quadratic. So it's a curve and a negative looks like that. So it's upside down, okay? Whereas, so if you had um, white, was so if you had y equals x you get your straight line if you have y equals x squared you get your like so so your curved your u shape y equals x cubed you get this kind of uh, indent in the middle like a snake like curve okay so we should know those three curves and what the discriminant tells us then as I said is how many times when we set this thing equal to zero we're interested in essentially how many times the curve crosses the x-axis i.e. when y is zero so you can see on a quadratic here if I make draw this this quadratic crosses the x-axis twice so it, it's got what's called two real distinct roots okay so i.e. when y is zero x has two solutions x is one solution so let's say minus one and x is three so there are two real roots here you could have a quadratic however which looks like this where it just touches the x-axis when y equals zero so when y equals zero let's say this is two it means you have one repeated real root okay why is it repeated real root because there's only one number x equals two which comes up twice because you've got this x squared term okay that means that there should always be two solutions if it was an x cubed we should say there's three solutions you see and x4 there'll be four solutions right but they may not be distinct um it would be said that this is that if it if two was the only x solution for x cubed which is uh, that means that it would be considered a repeated real root three times okay I hope that I hope that makes sense so how does the discriminant link in with all of this like I say it tells us how many times it crosses the x-axis when the graph equals zero when y equals zero so the last case so two root two real roots hits twice okay and that's when your discriminant is positive and I'll, we'll talk about why in a second 
when you when it touches the graph that's when your discriminant equals zero so your b squared minus 4ac equals zero because you've only got one real root so this is two real roots one repeated real root and then the final situation is when you've got your quadratic and it doesn't cross the x-axis at all because remember we're saying when the graph equals zero but clearly this is this is the y-axis the graph doesn't equal zero here so there are no real roots you see there are no values for x that make this graph zero because I can see from from it that it never crosses the x-axis so this is when your discriminant is less than zero all right so hopefully that's said a bit about roots and stuff, but it still hasn't really cleared up what the discriminant is and where we see it. Well, hopefully you've seen b squared minus 4ac somewhere before, because this is actually in the quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We should be familiar with that formula. That's called the quadratic formula. And can you see that the discriminant goes right in there so it does you can see it makes sense because if so if b squared minus 4ac uh, is bigger than zero then you will be square rooting a positive number and therefore you will get a plus or minus so x will be minus b plus the square root of that thing over 2a and x will be minus b minus the square root of that thing over 2a whereas if b squared minus 4ac equals zero, right, essentially this disappears, doesn't it? Because square root of zero is zero, and this disappears. So you get minus b over 2a. So you just get one value for x, okay? Whereas if b squared minus 4ac was less than zero, then this thing in here is negative isn't it if it's less than zero it's it's a minus number and we can't square root a minus number so therefore x can't be x can't equal anything there are no real roots okay so that's the discriminant in context so let's use it then we do have this in the form above as ax squared plus bx plus c it's in the right order so a must be two B must be minus 8, and C must be plus 8, okay? So therefore, we can go straight for the B squared minus 4AC formula. So B squared is minus 8, all in brackets squared. Be careful of that. If you put in your calculator minus 8 squared, your calculator does 8 squared and then times it by minus 1, all right? But you don't want that. You want everything squared. So minus 8 times minus 8. If you put it in brackets in your calculator, then square it, it will do it properly, okay? So minus 4a, which is 2, and c, which is 8. So minus 8 squared is 64, minus 4 lots of uh, 2 is 8, times that by 8 and 64, so we get 0, okay? So what we're saying is that the graph has one repeated real root, i.e. it only crosses the x-axis once, and we can show that through graph because you don't believe me do you so if I put in that graph so y equals uh, what do we have y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 8 there's our graph and you can see that it touches it at 2 okay at x equals 2 and it just touches it once all right <coughs> So there's our discriminant in action. And if we had the next example then, won't go on too long about it. That was all the theory. Um, so here, this is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Fantastic. So a must be three, b must be minus three, and c must be 18. Okay, be careful with the minuses. That is attached to b, okay? Uh, that minus three. So b squared minus four ac is your discriminant b squared is minus 3 all squared, remember that minus all in brackets, minus 4 lots of 3 times 18, so minus 3 all squared is 9, minus 4 times 3, that's 12 times by 18, 12 times 18, 
I'm just going to put that in the calculator. Um, I don't deal, <laughs> you know, with numbers anymore. <laughs> it's all it's all letters now. Now some people are really good at uh, this kind of thing, but it's been a long day. So let's just go for it. So minus 207, which is less than zero. So hence, no real roots. I, i.e., there's no point me even putting this in the quadratic formula because it doesn't cross the x-axis, okay? Um, next one, part C. This is not in the form yet as of ax squared plus bx plus c is zero, you see? Because it doesn't equal zero and all the terms aren't in the right order necessarily. So let's bring everything over. So minus two x from both sides and plus four both sides. So now it does equal zero and that's great. And sometimes you might get a situation where you have minus 2x plus 4, you know, plus 3x squared equals 0, and you get your a's and b's mixed up in the wrong way. Just write it so the x squared terms at the start. And now you can go straight for b squared minus 4ac. b squared is minus 2 all squared, keep that bracket there, minus 4 times 3 times 4. So we get <coughs> uh, minus 2 squared is 4, minus 4 lots of so 16 times 3, so I can do that one, that's 48. So we get minus 44, which again is less than 0. So that means no real roots. This thing doesn't cross the x-axis. Okay, so no real roots. End of video.